Hello and welcome to episode 21 of the Sweet Lavender Knits podcast. My name is Christine and I'm coming to you from just outside of Toronto, Ontario in Canada. Thank you very much for joining me today. It is October the 9th, 2018 and I want to welcome you if you are new and welcome back to those that are returning. Uh, you can find me on social media on Instagram as sweet underscore lavender one and on Ravelry as sweet lavender one. We also have a lovely Ravelry group called Sweet Lavender Knits and uh, you come on by, check us out and uh, we have a, a couple of things happening there right now and uh, feel free to join the group and introduce yourself in the welcome thread. Um, the podcast is mainly about uh, knitting and uh, maybe some sewing and crocheting and other crafts when and if I fancy them. Uh, so today is a beautiful crisp autumn day and uh, we are well into fall and I am um, hoping that you will join me on my knit night. So why don't you grab your needles, a favorite project that you like to work on, something nice to drink, and let's get started. So first of all, thank you very, very much for all of you who left comments uh, on my last episode, uh, both here in YouTube as well as on the Ravelry group. Uh, I want to thank you very, very much for sharing your favorite place to knit. Uh, and I have to say, most of you said it was in... Uh, the living room in the sofa or on the sofa um, you know knitting while you're watching TV or just spending time with your family and that is just heartwarming that is really really nice because uh, knitting can be a very um, um, it can be a very personal uh, craft in the sense like you can enjoy it uh, without anybody just by yourself as well as in a in a group setting and uh, the others in that group don't have to be knitters and you can be still enjoying that time uh, with them which is really very really nice um, but thank you very very much for sharing your comments and you know just all your wonderful um, wishes for this podcast and um, some of you had shared that um, uh, you've been watching for uh, a while or even since the beginning and for that I really want to thank you um, especially for your support all of you all of you new and uh, uh, those that have been watching all along uh, because now we are over 200 subscribers and I, I just can't uh, it's. I know it's not a very big number com compared to many other podcasts, and I'm not here for the numbers, really. I've said that over and over again. I am he here mainly to have uh, just be part of a group, and uh, you've helped me achieve that. And now I have 200 uh, plus, uh, just a little more than 200, I think it was the last time I checked. And uh, I feel like I have to, you know, like, I have to up my game somehow, but I really don't know how to because I just want it to be a knit night. And I hope you're okay with that with me. So thank you very, very much for your support. I really appreciate it. So if you are new, I wanna just say that this is uh, my knit night. I don't have a local knit night to go to, so I've formed uh, one on YouTube and you are free to join in. And uh, if you are up to it, if you like what you see, and if you enjoy a little bit of my, um, uh, talk <laughs> I do a lot of that actually but if you're up to it and if you like what you see then feel free to subscribe and uh, hit that notification bell so that you'll know as soon as I upload a video that was uh, instructions given to me by my nine-year-old that I should be saying that uh, or else it won't get out there the word won't get out there the, there is such a podcast so apparently I'm supposed to do that and so I've done it here a little awkward but there you go <laughs> so uh, thank you thank you again and I just wanted to take that time to thank all of you for your support and uh, just your you know all your lovely wishes um, so what's going on I have a little bit of a sniffle I hope you will uh, excuse me 
so uh what's going on it's uh the the last since the last podcast it's been the end of september and uh, as i work in the financial industry um basically what that means is quarter end rush we have quarter end uh we have month ends but quarter ends are a little more busy than month ends and now we're going into year end for the next quarter end in december so it is quite busy at work to say the least uh it's busy at work and then uh you know i don't get a lot of time when i'm busy at work and I, I, I try not to uh make too many things um at home or, or or do a lot of activities at home after work so it's been a little busy but all of you have always heard that and it's always busy at work, right? Um, but I have to say now I've come into the favorite month of mine in the year and that is October. I do enjoy spring, but October is my birthday month and um, I uh, love October now even more because now we have a new addition to the family and she's an October baby as well. We had uh, baby Evian, uh, that's my niece, uh, arrive on October the 2nd and uh, she is the cutest, sweetest bundle of joy and I am a very proud auntie and uh, it's just so nice to have another girl in the family. Um, I have two boys and a uh, and a girl my daughter is 16 or will be turning 16 at the end of this month and so we have three girls in the family who are in October and I think it's very special for us so that's another thing and so moving into um, you know uh, what this weekend has been it's all it's, she was born just last week um, so this weekend it's uh, you know we, we also had Thanksgiving in Canada so any fellow Canadians watching me, I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. And uh, ours was uh, a busy one in the sense that we still had to do a little bit of preparation. Uh, as I've mentioned before, my son is heading off at the uh, end of this month, in two weeks actually. And so um, I've uh, had to do a little preparation for that, but we also had Thanksgiving dinner at my mom's last night. So uh, there was a little bit of cooking and, you know, getting ready for that. I didn't do the turkey, my mom did, uh, but we all brought sides and uh, we had a lovely time. So it was a very nice Thanksgiving dinner. It was a very nice weekend all together. Weather-wise, it's been just perfect autumn so far. Uh, you know, a little bit of rain, just cooler days and I am... I am thankful for those cooler days because I had enough of the hot summer. Um, I, I like uh, warmer days, but not, not when it was so hot. It was just too hot for me. But it was nice. So we had a very nice long weekend and I just extended that with another day at home. And I thought uh, I really did want to podcast um, and I was hoping to do that on Sunday, but it didn't happen. So here I am on, on Tuesday. And um, yes, so that's what has been going on. And now we're heading into the next two weeks, uh, right into mid-October. And um, yes, like I said, uh, my birthday is coming up and I am have never been one to speak about my birthday. It's just, but my parents were nice enough to yesterday at Thanksgiving dinner. They also brought, uh, made, did a little surprise and brought me a cake. So, um, you know, I had everyone sing happy birthday for me and a little bit of fuss, which was, uh, you know, a little uh, out of my zone, but um, it was nice. It was nice just to have family around and it was very nice. Um, and uh, yes, so let's just move on to what's on the calendar. It's so awkward speaking about myself. <laughs> it's just weird. Oh. We have uh, two things going on mainly right now. One has died down a little bit, but I'm hoping that you guys will at some point want to continue with the Operation Whip Control, which is just to work on your really old whips and try to get them off the needles so you'll have free needles to cast something on uh, again. So uh, that is still there. And I have to say, tying in with that, if you are in the Operation Whip whip control and have been working through your whips, I would highly recommend checking out another 
such a, a knit along I would say uh, which is the knit 1000 grams and that's on Luli's uh, podcast and that's Lay and she uh, hosted by Lay and she um, has this uh, cal going on of uh, knitting uh, uh, up to a hundred or maybe over a thousand grams so one kilo or over um, and she will draw a winner when she's heading on her way to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival I believe that's somewhere in March I'm not sure so you have more than enough time to do that the only thing is you should be stash diving or having started your whips uh, prior to September the 1st, I believe the dates are. You could go check out the details on her um, Ravelry group. Uh, but yes, so if you are partaking in the Operation Whip Control and need a little more incentive or, you know, a, a more active group, I think, because we are a smaller group, feel free to join hers. And, and I'm sure she's okay with that as well. And uh, yeah, so you can, um, you can hit a lot of places at the same time with your uh, works in progress that you are getting off those needles. I have actually joined the one hand, uh, knit 1000 grams um, uh, knit along and I'm hoping uh, most of my whips that I do have on the needles um, except for maybe two are prior to September so I'm hoping to try and um, meet that 1000 grams we'll see i uh, you know i always set these goals for myself but uh i also don't put too much pressure on myself to finish them just because uh then it then it just throws me off completely so that is one thing operation whip control and uh, the next thing is uh the back to school cal and uh i really really thank all of you for joining in those that you that have and again just to share without going into too much details you can find all the detail details on the ravelry group but um you it is basically to learn a new technique for yourself so uh it's uh, i shouldn't say technique it, it can be a new craft a new technique you can try out a new design uh, a designer that you've never tried uh, with the you know maybe some sort of a pa pattern um, modification that you've never tried or something like that but uh, yeah just uh, keeping it light and uh, I'm not looking for finished objects it's gonna go f up until December 15th it started on September 15th and uh, so we are now into the almost one month but at the end of this month, I'll be drawing a prize for the midterms. And that basically is just, you know, just to have fun. There's no nothing that you have to do um, more, but just continue to p uh, please post uh, comments on that thread with your updates or even just, uh, you know, um, on what you would like to do or what's coming up in your project or something like that. And October 31st, I'll draw a winner. Um, just a random uh, uh, post and uh, yeah there will be a prize for that as well I haven't determined the prizes yet uh, but there will be one so don't forget to do that um, then the next thing I want to say is I think it's time for a monthly giveaway especially it being a special month for me I would like to do a monthly giveaway and that is just my way of saying thank you to all of you for being part of my knit night and for the support you've given me so far and uh, so I thought I would just um, open up Actually, no, this time I wanted to do it different. I wanted to draw a winner from the comments down in the YouTube uh, channel. So I will be drawing a winner on the last week of um, last week of October. And that's probably when I'm going to be podcasting again, the last weekend, weekend. Um, so just before I podcast is when I'll just draw the winner. So feel free to post a comment down below and, you know, be part of the monthly giveaway. And, um, 
you know, I ask that you are a subscriber on my YouTube channel. Um, I usually say subscriber and a, a follower on the, the Ravelry group, but at this time I'll just say subscriber because I know that some of you are not able to use Ravelry or not able to uh, navigate through Ravelry, so I just want to keep it light. So yes, so that is that. And then it being my uh, birthday this month, I thought I would make it a little extra special and be drawing two winners. So the other one will be on an Instagram post that I will do on my birthday. Uh, I'm not going to say the date yet, uh, but it is fairly soon. So just keep an eye out. If you are a follower on my Instagram channel, then you will see that post and you can join in for that giveaway as well. So just, you know, um, uh, I thought I would extend the, the, the celebrations that have been around me so far uh, with all of you and just share that with you as well. So moving on to finished objects, I have one finished object this time. And I have to say, this is a very, very exciting and um, very special uh, finished object, but I held on to it just for a little while longer without giving it to the person I wanted to, just because I wanted to share it on the podcast. So let me just uh, prep. <laughs> prep the finished object here and just bear with me a second and here we go this is the uh, opal sock bunny by susan b anderson the pattern and here is my little bunny i'll give a little twirl with a little pom-pom tail and there got a little uh, embroidered face. Uh, I did little French knots for her eyes and uh, her nose. And I just used uh, black yarn. Um, the pattern says to use embroidery yarn, but um, embroidery thread. But I thought this will stand out a little bit more. Um, she is uh, obviously in the pattern knit with opal yarn, but I'm using two very special yarns to me. The pink, the light pink here is, um, hello, <laughs> is um, Strawberry Feels Forever by Ellie of Craft House Magic. And I love this yarn and I wish I could, you know, like have more and more of it because it's the perfect amount of speckling on it. And it's the sweetest pink ever. It's, it's the kind of pink that I like. It's very, very light pink. And uh, she has like little dumbbells for her hands and feet, which make her the perfect, uh, perfect uh, little companion hopefully and this is for baby Evian who is my newborn niece and uh, I knit this in time for her and I was hoping to give it to her yesterday but I wanted to share it on the podcast first so, and I'm sure she won't mind because she does a lot of you know uh, feeding and sleeping at this point so I'm sure she wouldn't mind if I held on for just a few more days so there is my finished objects what else can I say I love her floppy ears um, I did another bunny I did the boy bunny with the pie ball patch uh, except without the pie ball patch and I gave that to her to Evian's uh, older brother who's about 17 months right now um, uh, for Christmas last year so he, she, now Evian has her own and uh, hopefully hopefully this will be a nice uh, gift that she will enjoy for many years to come I hope so I really do oh the other yarn the dark pink uh, that I've used for the body is um, um, Madeline Tosh Merino in the colorway Coquette de. It's uh, French. I hope I'm pronouncing it somewhere close to what it should be. And um, yes, I love this because it was one of my first uh, 
uh, splurges kind of uh, in yarn but uh, yes here we go a little bunny that I got and now you're probably wondering why I did this uh, you know striping with the face is because um, my idea with that is that when children are babies or babies um, see patterns and it uh, stimulates their grow it it helps with the growing as well as it stimulates the eyes and all that so i just wanted it to be a little interesting and i know um uh, you know and that's the whole idea behind the um uh, the striping on the face and then when i got past the face i was like no I, I it was a little tedious for me to be switching yarns so i did the body plain and i think it looks okay this way um and i really really like these floppy ears they they they're so cute so that's my first finished object and i'm just going to place the bunny right here so she can share in my podcast at least in this episode there and um yes so i really had fun making that pattern i highly recommend it if you are um if you are new to uh, knitting soft toys uh, or stuffed toys, uh, this is a very good pattern because it teaches you a few techniques like um, picking up stitches, um, you know, using waste yarn to leave a slit basically and then come back and pick it up and that's how these arms and feet were done um and another thing that i learned is uh, her, uh susan b anderson's patterns are very well written i've uh bought a few of them so far i haven't knit all of them but um i do read the patterns as soon as i i download them and uh they are very well written without um, assuming that you know a lot so it's very good for beginners and uh, very detailed and this one has you weaving in the ends as you go so you're done as long as as soon as you're done the last stitch and you weave in that last end you're done you don't have to go back and weave in ends and whatever else so it was really fun putting it together and you knit it top down, uh, knit as you go, joining the pieces in and, um, uh, well, yeah, you're not really joining anything in. Um, you leave the slits and then you work the ears out. So, and then you move on after you've done your head on the head, you pick up stitches and you work the body and then you, you're leaving slits for the arms and feet. And then the only thing I had to attach on was the tail, the little pom-pom tail. My pom-pom tail didn't come out too, too good. I don't know if you can see that. There is a slight split where the yarn went through and you can kind of see it, but uh, I've, I have secured it on well, so I'm hoping Evian won't mind too much. <laughs> we'll see. There. There. Um, okay, and now moving on to works in progress. I have three um, works in progress, and I'm going to try and go through this pretty fast because um, there isn't a lot to say about it um, but I will show you my progress in each of them first is the Madewell cardigan by Hohi Locatelli and this is part of the, her cal that I've joined in it's the Hohi's fall knit along and um, this is my train knitting. So I will always be sharing one of my works in progress, which would be my train knitting. And um, that is because that is the one cons um, consistent time uh, of knitting I do in the day is on the train when I'm heading into work. Uh, coming back from work, it really depends on um, whether I, I'm able to or not. But anyways, here I am. And I'm part way between a row here, which I should have thought of before, but here is the lovely yarn. I'll share that with you. It's got a nice halo on it too. Uh, it is uh, by Solca Legato, and this is shade number four. It's got merino, alpaca, and silk 
in the yarn it's very very nice it's a little drapey at this point and I know it blocks well um, I'm did I say the pattern yes it's the made ball cardigan and uh, the needles that I'm using are the kinky I'm berry which is my ke interchangeable set and um, these are 3.5 millimeters um, and I'm loving it. I can't really show you much more. This mess is the Madewell cardigan. So I'm sorry, I can't really show much to you. It's got a raglan, um, it, how do you say it? It's, it's raglan uh, shaping. I don't know, what do, you, what do you call that? It's a raglan top-down cardigan and uh, it's just a very nice, simple pattern on the raglan there. And uh, I love the feel of this yarn and it is light, but it's warm. So that's it. And uh, I'm still on the first two balls and I am uh, alternating skeins. So here's my first and uh, here's the second. So I'm, I am alternating. So I did about uh, an inch without alternating and then I started to alternate them. So. There I am. That's my first work in progress. So now moving on to my second, which is, um, oh my gosh, this has been on my needles for the longest time, but now we are on home stretch and hopefully, hopefully I should have it done. I was hoping to have it done um, before October uh, so I could, uh, you know, wear it for my birthday or around there at least. But here is the Zweig by Caitlin Hunter and this is lovely yarn the main body is cozy posy yarn coves um sweater weather and uh, the mustard yoke is uh do, 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 I forgot it's the colorway is turmeric and it's a Debbie Bliss Donegal tweed something like Donegal something like that uh and in the colorway turmeric and I have one sleeve done. So the last time I showed you, I was just starting this uh, on the sleeve. So now I have this one sleeve done and I totally forgot. I wanted to do, uh, I told you that I was knitting it plain without the textured pattern that the body has uh, on the sleeve. And I was hoping to do like a band here of the textured pattern but I totally forgot and I knit it all the way to the end and I really didn't want to rip it out. So I just left it the way it is. I did a two inch uh, ribbing and a little um, line with two rows of the uh, mustard color in there just to tie it up with the um, hem on the bottom of the sweater that I did. And I, after I picked up stitches for the sleeve, I totally abandoned the pro, uh, the the pattern itself because I had worked out numbers for my, the sleeve for myself. Um, the sleeve, I had uh, given myself a few more stitches on the arm because I need, need it for my arms. And uh, so I had to work with the numbers I had and I just did a very, um, how do you say not a uh, two fitted but a very relaxed uh sleeve so when i try it on or when i do wear it you will see that it's not a very fitted sleeve but it works out well for me um i would have liked to go a little longer on the sleeve but i was a little worried as to if I would have enough yarn so I just stopped it right at the wrist and uh, hopefully with blocking I should be able to stretch it out just a little bit more. So now I'm on to the second sleeve and I just picked up yesterday and did about an inch uh, on the second sleeve. So slow progress but uh, getting there and actually I did not work on this uh, sweater for maybe about two weeks now because I needed the needles. Once I bound off on the first sleeve, I needed the needles uh, to finish um, the little sock bunny. So um, I had to finish that and then come back to the sleeve. And so I lost about two weeks there, but that's okay. I mean, you know, 
it wasn't like I could have got a sleeve done in, in a day or two anyways. Uh, so that is my um, swag. Okay, so then moving on to my third work in progress. This is my sizzle pop um, shawl. And it is a lovely pattern by Leslie Ann Robinson. And this is how much I've done. <laughs> so not a lot, not a lot at all. But here is my uh, progress keeper. Here's my lovely progress keeper, I should say, right here. So this was where I was at last time, just above the second mark. And uh, actually I was probably higher up, uh, but I had my lifeline here. And then when I picked it up, I had to rip it back to the lifeline because I could not get it right. I didn't, I didn't, I'd forgotten where I'd left off. Even though I hadn't marked, it seemed like I was missing a step because it just looked wrong. So I, I ripped back to the lifeline, which was where right at this point here, and then I had to knit up again. So my greatest fear right now with this um, project is I love working on it but as soon as I put it down then I'm always worried about picking it back up because I seem to struggle with getting it right so um, it's a little slow going but I am enjoying it I'm still enjoying it um, so this is where I'm at and um, this I'm not sure why I have this I'm not sure why I have this marker in here. Anyways, I have a lifeline there and now I'm on to the next uh, next repeat. Um, yeah, so it's, it doesn't look uh, like I've done a lot, but to me it feels like I've worked a lot on this. <laughs> Maybe because I've been, you know, ripping back. I still have to rip back, I don't know why. I mean, everything seems to go fine and then I get a little distracted or I'm watching a you know, podcast while I'm uh, knitting it and I look back at the chart and I've lost my place. Uh, even though I have it marked and everything, it's just, I. it's like something flips in my mind and turns the switch off. So, <laughs> brioche, it is, it's fun, it is fun, but uh, you know, I haven't gotten into the swing of it, so I, I can't just pick it up and go. So I have to think about it, I have to look at my knitting, read my knitting, and it takes a little bit of time. Ah, uh, the, the joys of uh, learning new techniques. And oh, so if you are new, that is my contribution, or that is the the project that is new to me it's my new technique and uh i'm working on it for the back to school cal so yeah it doesn't have to be as crazy as mine it can be something a lot simpler if if uh you know i don't i don't want to intimidate you in feeling that you had to you know bring in a really strong game or anything like that it's just um whatever your uh wanting to learn something new and that's all it is so just uh, do feel free to join in and it's a lot of fun so it looks like i have uh, a busy schedule ahead of me uh knitting wise and uh because i'm all of these three projects that i've shown you will be part of the uh, knit 1000 grams that i've already mentioned uh part of that that is being hosted by lee of luli's podcast and um uh you know i'm hoping to have it done by march <laughs> i hope so um and uh, the other thing I do want to join in is, or the other knit along is the festive sock along by Amy of a Stranded uh, Podcast. And that is uh, to knit a pair of Christmas socks. So I knit the evergreen socks the last year, and I believe it was for another knit along but I like the pattern so much and I have uh, 
a wintry themed uh, yarn not themed but wintry looking yarn and uh, that I would definitely like to knit into the evergreen socks again so um, that will be wound up uh, maybe later today and um, hoping to start that the, the her cal goes on up until November the 15th so that should give me a good time to uh, knit up a pair of socks so those are the things on um, my planner and I hope uh, you are having fun joining in with many other knit alongs and uh, enjoying all of your knitting, your crocheting, your quilting, uh, your sewing and all the other crafts that you guys do. Uh, thank you very, very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed watching this podcast and I hope you got some knitting done too and uh, thank you thank you very much for joining in with my knit night it just makes it so much more fun for me I hope you have a wonderful week ahead of you and uh, that the weather is treating you well and uh, until next time happy knitting bye bye <music>